Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Give me a moment, would you, friend? I've never been on trial for my thoughts before. Welcome to the Only One Mike Podcast. Carl Gerard, just me, Brooklyn Dre. How y'all doing? Peace, brother. Oh, great, 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 right. great, great. All right, so, Jim Jones, <laughs> the Gucci store, allegedly evacuated because he, you know, was there. Let's just call it what it is, all right? Harlem meltdown. Harlem meltdown. <laughs> you know, I love him. I'm gonna tell you what's what's crazy about this is that he he's from Harlem and he got money now. And if you listen to this rant, it really sounds like he's just like outside reality. The stuff that this guy is saying is crazy. All right, well let's hear it. You you I know uh, you I know you like him. I know that's your man. I, I, I ain't love got him. nothing against him. He yeah. never did nothing to me or for me, but you I know. love him. Yeah, this is a little bit kind of like on some diva stuff. So, and and, and little mama's daddy, I'll take him too. <laughs> Leave little mama's daddy out of this. All right, so we're going we're going to check this out. This is Jim Jones and the um, Gucci story. Y'all got to check this out. Hold on. We've been in Gucci for about an hour, right? And we in Gucci in the VIP. We've been in Gucci for like two hours, two hours. right? Since we came in here, having nobody came and showed us no courtesy, no amenities, no nothing. Period. Not even a drink of water. Asked to speak to the manager. Send me a black guy out here to start telling me some bullshit. So they got the black guy racial profiling on black people. Asked to speak to the manager bigger than him. Everybody disappeared. Ain't nobody come out yet. I still ain't getting. I still ain't getting no sparkling water. I still ain't getting no champagne. I still ain't getting nothing. I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop it right there. Did you hear what he said? He didn't get a sparkling water. He didn't get a sparkling water. Now, that's one thing, but it's just like, if you know that what is like the first person that come up, the second person or whatever, and they kind of snowing you over is what he's saying. Why are we even still in the Gucci store making a, a video? I don't know. I mean, he might have just been making a video to prove a point. We don't know if he's ever going to buy Gucci again. Um, he will. <laughs> he will. Um, the, the sad part yeah, about I'm it quite is... Sure the sad part about it is this happens with our people all the time. Like there's a lot of things that we should boycott, but we don't, as a unit, we don't stick together. Like if I go into a store and they don't, you know, they don't give me good service. You know what I mean? We really shouldn't give them our money and you shouldn't support that. But the fact that it's Gucci, you know, they are probably going to give, they are probably going to owe him an apology. They'll probably they won't apologize. Stuff. They will not apologize. They might. Look at what happened with Oprah. That same thing happened with Oprah when okay, she I'm was Okay, I'm going to stop in. you right there. Oprah, Jim Jones. No, but listen, the same thing happened to Oprah when she was in, um, where was she? She was in Italy or something like that, or Paris or something, and she went inside the, she went, she went to go get a bag, and they just, like, didn't want to sell it to her or anything like that. But you know, you're, you know you're talking about different type of money, right? <laughs> So you talking about Oprah you know what, in Italy? This is Jim Jones it, in Harlem. But I'm but the, saying, you know the, the you know the bottom point. line is they don't want you there. That's, That's what I'm fact. saying. They don't That's want you I'm there. Saying. Why why are you why are you going there? You know what? We are the only people that force people to take our money. That's We're arguing fact. with them to take our yeah, money. You yeah. know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. Hold yeah. on, I'm gonna get someone contacts in this. Hold on one second. Y'all just stop me whenever y'all hear some type of trigger word that makes you want to say something against us. All right, hold on. Yeah. I didn't have a salesperson inside of my VIP suite the whole time I was there. I had to keep screaming for VIP people to help me out. Now everybody don't know where the real manager is. Why is he still there? Yeah. He's angry. I why why is right he still now, there? I would, I would still be there filming my video. Do y'all believe what's going on? I'm still stuck in the Gucci store. Ain't nobody. I, mean, I wouldn't be stuck in the Gucci store. store. You you pack up your tents and leave. Yeah, but you gotta make a you gotta but let you know it be what? known that you're a dissatisfied customer, and that's what he's doing. Man, he but you know what the thing of it is is that I, I I could respect that if that was his uh maybe that's maybe that is his first encounter, but historically there's so many situations that happens inside of Gucci that 
black people should not be surprised when they go to Gucci and get what they get, man. Now you saying his first encounter in the Gucci store like this, or just in general? I don't, I don't know if it's his first encounter, man. But I'm just saying in general, you know, I mean, he's we been have profiled numerous... before. I'm quite sure. No, I'm just saying we have numerous situations, you know, with different artists that has had problems with Gucci. We had the advertisement. They did the whole thing where they try to give a couple of bucks to Dapper Dan to do his whole Gucci thing and whatever, whatever. They, you know, they give an apology here or there. I mean, they have a history of not really respecting our money. You know what I mean? So why do you continue to go there? Because it's, it's, a, you know it's a status about, symbol. It's a status symbol. You know what's sad, you know what's sad, sad about black people? A black person can go into a local soul food joint one time and get a bad deal in the soul food joint or get bad service. And they'll walk out and talk crazy about that soul food joint forever to the point where they'll, uh, you know, destroy the business. Just completely bad mouth the business and destroy the business and nobody wants to go there within the neighborhood. But when it comes to Gucci and all of these uh, design brands and all the other stuff like that, these Negroes will force themselves to spend money up in there, man. And they look like fools. I, if you, I saw the whole video. I mean, I don't want to, you know, maybe I want to jump ahead, but I think he said he spent like twenty nine thousand dollars. Yeah, that's something right. like that. Let's just jump right. What in. could you buy for twenty nine thousand dollars? Let's just see. Hold on one second. You heard? It's it's tired. I'm tired of this. We spending all this money as entertainers inside these stores. They hire these black people, and these black people are more racist than white people when they get their job inside of Gucci. All of a sudden, you, you stop playing with us, bro. Still haven't seen a manager yet. Still haven't seen a manager yet since I'm talking to you right now. Manager still hasn't popped out of Gucci. If this was McDonald's, would you stay there? Just a general question. No, 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 I'm not staying there. I'm not, I'm not. I, this listen, you don't want money, my money, my money, I'm out. I hear what you're saying, Meech, though. You're saying probably his initial thing of, I don't know, maybe feeling. He's bringing uh, awareness. Dis- but, but dis- this discriminated is, against or whatever. Outside of him, right? Here's the thing. I've ha- I've run into this situation and I'm not a star. You know what I'm saying? Right, right here, right here um, in East Chester, New York. There, I was in um, Lord and Taylor's. It's so funny because my mother was up in Lord and Taylor's, and um, she was shopping, and I didn't even know she was in there. I was in there with um, one of my homegirls, high school friend at the time, and she stole. But yet they pulled me into the room and and go through all my clothes. Like so I'm assuming my this friend of yours was a Caucasian woman. <laughs> See. Mm. and they go through my bag and they read my receipt and they call my mother and tell my mother I'm banned from the store right and it's crazy my mother's like what do you mean I went back in the store I went back in the store let me find out you, let me find but, out you got a white booster no but, <laughs> but, but the thing but the crazy thing is like it happens to us all of the time like you know a big name um a star, it doesn't matter. It's just skin color. So you went and back to the store? I, think ha- I just want to go back to that. You went back to the store after that? No, I said it's not about being a star. It's just No, I said you color. went back to the store. Oh, yeah, I did. Even after but you, you know did what all I, of that, though? But I, was, but I was doing it because I was young. You know, I haven't, I, I don't, I didn't shop there, but I just wanted to go back in because they said I couldn't. Mm. But I didn't buy nothing, but I walked around that store, you know, and I looked. My thing is, at the end of the day, we shouldn't support no more. But but it, it takes a lot of us sticking together and backing each other up for, for it to make a statement. We don't hurt anybody's pockets because there's always a group of us that still goes back. You know what I'm saying? They still support. We still give money. Like, And it's crazy because if you feel as though you're being mistreated or racially profiled, whatever, you know, you should ask to speak to a manager. He's not wrong by asking to speak to a manager right now. You should ask to, if they blowing smoke, then you need to talk to the next person. So he's right about that. The thing is, the difference between him and us is he's he's got a little status. You know what I mean? Because he's in entertainment and he's popular and, you know, we regular. Do you think that like when I, he walked in there that people actually knew that was Jim Jones? I mean... 
this is the thing about Jim Jones, right? Like, the thing with him is he's popular. We know him. You know, he's known across the states. He might be known in some countries, too, because I'm sure he traveled abroad to do some so, some shows at some point. But he's not Michael Jordan. You see what I'm saying? So he's not he's not 50 cents level. I guess I guess what I guess what in the, at the end of the day, it really don't matter who you are. I mean, I guess if you can afford it and be there. But at the end of the day, I just don't get like why these artists are so surprised when they go into these um, these stores. They don't even they really don't even market the clothes towards you. You That's know what I mean? True. And black people love they love to get in these videos. They love to get in these um these uh you know, these photo shoots and have all of this stuff on and spend buku money for it. And they don't care about you. And the sad part about um, that dude, uh, he, I'm quite sure he has access to a lot of black designers. And I'm not saying, you know, God knows I ain't got a racist bone in my body, man. I'm just saying that, you know, you could support other people that would be interested in supporting you. I don't care if they're white or black or anything like that, but. But it's Gucci. Gucci. And that's the thing. When we get a little paper, that's the first thing we do. We go to Louis Vuitton. We go to Gucci. We go buy red bottoms. You know what I'm saying? And we and we and we go get the Versace. Some of us. All over. Some Just, of us. Yeah, some of us. I would, I would never like, buy yeah, it. It's like yeah, I made it, and look at what I'm wearing. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I was in college, my homegirl from Philly brought me to her house. You know what I'm saying? And her mom's wardrobe filled with Donna Karen. But it wasn't DKNY. It wasn't Donna Cameron written all over. She had actual Donna Cameron suits. You know what I'm saying? She, she wore every day to work. And my thing is, you know, just like with 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 um Coach, I had Coach bags from when I was in high school. My mom had bought me Coach bags. I still have my Coach bags. They don't have the C's all over it and all of that stuff. It's okay to like nice stuff. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, it's not. It's, it's, it's nothing. It. It's not. It's nothing but, wrong with it. But it's nothing wrong with it. But when you take your money and you flashy with it, it's kind of like that's stupid to me. So do you kind of think this is kind of like him stunting as well? Because I mean, no, we didn't play the full always, video. We don't play the no. full video. Oh, go ahead, play, play some more. You want to play some more? You you know, play some more? I mean, I don't. I, no, hold on. Hold on a second. I don't care about him. You know, you know, doing whatever he do. You know what I mean? Because again, if it's your money and you can afford it. God bless you. You know what I mean? Yeah. As long as it don't look, I'm, I'm, I'm into well. As long as the clothes look masculine, God bless you. But I just, my biggest thing is I don't understand why do we as black people just continue to beg people to take our money, and we don't beg our own people to take our money. We always find a problem with our. We have one. We have one bad experience with our people, and that's the end of it. With them, you know what I mean, and I, and again, I'm, let me say our people. I'm because all people is our people, but I'm just saying, just in general, I'm just talking about black people as of right now. You know what I mean? I have no <laughs> racist bone in my body, but my thing is, is that it's just like they just beg white white uh, businesses to take take their money. It's amazing to me, man. It's amazing. Yeah, I don't understand, but hold on, we're gonna check out a little bit more of this. So we left off where he didn't get the sparkling water or something like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. And the bill is like twenty nine thousand, but we didn't pay that yet. You heard? Why would we? They still haven't sent a manager or bottle of sparkling water or anything that says that we appreciate your service for being in here in Gucci and spending that bag. The big one. The big one. They sent this guy. What is he possibly going to do? <laughs> you heard? Yeah. What is he going to do? Is what I want to know. Still haven't seen a man. Is there a manager that works here or everybody's just a worker? $29,000. He didn't pay it. But you have the he ability to pay to. it. He was about to. He, Why? Yeah. $29,000. I mean, you know what you could have done with twenty. I mean, yeah, that's his had, business. To, to, that's his know. business. Yeah, hey, we you know we you know, we're not, you know, I'm not judging you counting their money. And yeah, all, I don't yeah. particularly care about any of this, but it's just the principle yeah. to just say like, like you said, as black people, why are we forcing this? Like, if the if you if the managers is coming out or it hasn't come out or whatever, and nobody's in the store to help you, 
I'm not going to sit there and beg you to take my money. I just would like to know well, if this was any place besides, but, but I mean, the act of just standing there. Like, He's yeah, standing there filming that he had bad, a bad customer service experience. He didn't mm-hmm. even pay them the 29000 Yeah, but I mean. And I got to tell you, mm-hmm. today's day and age, in this day and age, in today's times, it is the norm to pull out your phone and put st- people on blast for bad customer service, for whatever the case may be. Is He's he's not the only one that's made a video. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of, it's, I forgot what female went to, to Walg, um, it was a Rite Aid or a Walgreens or something. They follow her around, didn't even realize that she was like kind of famous. I forgot who it was. This was just like last year sometime. And she put the video up on her page. She filmed the whole thing, talking to the manager and all of that. And she filmed the whole thing. So it's the norm. I would respect it more if he said, you know what, listen, I came here, they disrespected me. You know, I gave I don't I'm not into the whole video thing, but if that's what he wanna do, I came here, they disrespected me, I made a video, you know, I made, he makes the video and he says, Yo, I'm never buying nothing from Gucci again. I'm out of here. That's it. Or I show, that, show that. the front of the building, this is the address, y'all don't shop here, whatever. This is the is. building, don't yeah. shop here, whatever. I, I mean respect what that. What else go what else happens in this video? I mean, what what's the bottom line? How does it end? Well, let's see. We, you know, we can that's pretty it. much it. But then also, too, the funny thing of it is, is that at the end of the day, even in that, right? And I'm I'm just saying this from just working man, right? Whoever that black guy is in the video, the security, uh, whatever, yeah. ready, whatever, he sent him out to do his job, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? He works at Gucci. You know what I mean? And to, you know, that whole what is he going to do and ridiculing him and putting him on the camera? That's just like, you know, like how we all work at a job and somebody tell you to do something. You just got to do it. You, you work in it, man. What is he going to do? Is he going to walk out and stand up and fight for Jim Jones at a, at, at that at his job? Jim Jones ain't paying him. I don't know. I, and I really don't know. We really don't know the whole ins and outs of what happened. We just know this. We l- listening to Jim Jones audio and yeah, right. at the end of the day, let's talk about the worker, okay, that came out to talk to him. Um, so you work for Gucci, and I come in there, you know what I'm saying? And I ask to speak to somebody, and they send you. Right? right How would okay. you feel if you was in that man's shoes? And How would you feel if you was in the worker's shoes? In the worker's shoes. Are you the type of person that would be like, are you the type of person to be like, why are y'all sending me because they're black? Well, that's more of like an inside baseball discussion. Like, cause as the shopper, you don't know who's the manager and who's not. Yeah. Then, and then yeah. also too, I mean, I, I, I don't, see what you're like saying, you said, we, we don't, stood up for that. Yeah. we don't, we don't know the whole scenario, you know, the complete right. scenario, but I would say this also too, looking at it from the, the, the brother's side, I don't know if it could have been, they just, they're putting a camera on him. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, he might—he got family to feed. Yeah, Jimmy ain't taking Jimmy ain't taking care of his family. You know what yeah. I mean? He's taking care of his family. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I'm not saying that it's all right to you know sell out or anything like that, man. I'm just saying, listen, man. That 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 problem is bigger than that man's pay grade, obviously. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That problem that problem goes to Gucci, man. You know what I mean? And it, I, it's kind of ironic out of all. And he, like he said, he couldn't find who he could find in the store, whatever the case may be. But, I mean, come on, man. Put the worker man on blast, man. That guy probably ain't making no money at Gucci. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> probably just a security guard or something. Who knows? Wasn't it the same situation I mean? I, I, where um, they was talking about, like, on long lines of uh, banning these companies? Was it, was it Gucci that... Everybody was saying, them, and they said put that, that sweater out or something like that. Yeah, and they it said they like gonna stop doing it. And then it was uh, Floyd Mayweather was saying like he was gonna still continue to it, shop there, and he made a video shopping or something. I don't want to say that yeah. it's Gucci. Was it Gucci? I think, yeah, I think so. it was. I think it, it was, was Gucci. something yeah. with the nooses. It was nooses or something on their clothes or something. Big I lips. Or something some like, like uh, weird, weird sweater or something like some lip, big lip, like Sambo looking sweater or something like that. Yeah. Something crazy, oh. man. But again, they they don't want you there, man. You know what's funny about it is they don't mind you buying the clothes. I guess he may think he's spending a lot of money because he's spending $29,000. It was, it was Gucci. Come- I'm sorry, y'all. It was Gucci. Blackface sweater. 
This was back in 2019. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. He 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 spent his twenty thousand twenty nine thousand dollars. There's probably people in there that that twenty twenty nine thousand dollars look like five bucks, man. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? And when they mm -hmm. go in there and they get them VIP sections and whatever, whatever. Not to say that it it means anything. I'm just saying they don't respect them. They don't while while they're while they're good high sedity clients are in there uh, sipping their uh, champagne or whatever the case may be. They don't want you in there. You know what I mean? The same company that made a racist sweater about two or three years ago. Well, that's what I'm saying. We never <laughs> so, stick together. Like we never. Yeah, stick so together. why are you even supporting this? You know, we, we never stick together and just stop. some of, some of these some of these designer brands feel like black people depreciate the value in their clothing, man. That's how some of them feel. They feel like we depreciate the value of their clothing. Yeah, I mean that, but you know, twenty nine thousand dollars. I'm like, I'm just saying, like, I'm not pocket watching the cat. If you got twenty nine thousand dollars <laughs> to spend, that's on you. God bless you. You can spend your money how you want to. But I'm just saying, me personally, is that I'm not going to stand in the store making a video. If you tell me the in manager fact, never came out, and you asking for champagne and sparkling water, because I know in one statement he made, he was like, normally. They give out so much champagne in this situation and he'd be drunk while he's shopping or something like that. Something crazy. But I'm like, why are you even still here? Yeah, you know I mean? ain't never begged nobody here? to take none of my money, man. I don't even like to stand on a long line to spend money. Yeah, if I, I don't, don't have do to. You know while we're talking about all this racial stuff, let's talk about... Uh... Yeah, your man. Yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> Joe I'm Rogan. All that? right, Joe Rogan. All right, so listen, man, uh, it is no mystery about what happened with Joe Rogan. You know what I mean? Um, he made some racist comments. Back in the day, he said it was a compilation that somebody made of all the racist stuff he said since the podcast has been going about, what, 12 years or so? Maybe more than that. Um, right. Spotify said they're not going to drop him. That's not happening. They said they're going to drop him. The fact that they said they wasn't going to drop him has now had a ripple effect because now artists, I know India Irie for one is like, well, she wants all her music pulled from Spotify. Well, she was campaigning on that anyway before <laughs> Joe Rogan. And, um, oh, I mean, listen, the thing about it is as a, as a, as an artist, I'm torn when it comes to stuff like this. Like, do I want to hear anybody? saying racial slurs? Of course not. But do I also re respect freedom of speech and freedom of expression? Yes, I do. The thing is, it's just like Facebook. If you don't want to hear it, you have the right to scroll past it. I'm not saying I agree with that, man. By no means do I agree with him. But if that's how he wants, that's a podcast I'll never listen to. So why do I care? I, I actually was on the fence initially until I heard his little compilation video. I don't think I'm... The, he was the N-word uh, a lot of times. And the more I go, the more I listen to that, I'm like, man, this is only like 12 years ago, man. This uh -huh. wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't wise to do 12 years ago. So let's, let's look at the, you know, listen to um, the compilation. Just maybe a little, few snippets of it, all right? So you get better right. context of what we're talking about. So this is Joe Rogan's compilation of him using the N-word. He didn't put this out. Somebody else did. So I don't want to say that Joe Rogan put it out, but someone did the compilation. So here we go. Oh, the nigger thing. Yeah. Saying the word nigger. Oh, I already said nigger. Uh, he is just like nigger. Well, saying nigger. She's calling you a nigger. It's like this boy that he's a nigger and starts calling them niggers. The word nigger. There should be a word like nigger, especially for word nigger that's our nigger about niggers he says nigger guy a nigger and there are niggers start saying nigger about to use the word nigger out the word nigger see nigger word nigger say nigger and he couldn't say nigger and most nigger he takes us there we get out and we're giggling oh we're see planet of the apes we walk into planet of the apes <laughs> we walked into africa dude we, we we walked in the door and there was no white people i'm making this video to talk about the most regretful and shameful thing that I've ever had to talk about publicly. 
There's a video that's out that's a compilation of me saying the N-word. And it looks fucking horrible, even to me. And there's another clip that I have to address. I was telling a story on the podcast about how me and my friend Tommy and his girlfriend, we got really high. We were in Philadelphia and we didn't know where we were going. We just got dropped off by a cab and we got dropped off in this all black neighborhood. And I was trying to make the story entertaining. And I said, we got out and it was like we were in Africa. It's like we were in Planet of the Apes. (laughs) So first of all, he's Hmm. ignorant because you know, to say that he got out, first of all, he called us monkeys right there. He said Planet of the Apes. And he said it felt like he was in Africa. You must not know that there's white people that live in Africa. So there's his ignorance right there. Um, third of all, I wouldn't even listen to his corny show. Nobody really even cares about him. And fourth of all, sadly to say it, it's a lot of people that feel the way he feels. And probably when they in their house or when they're talking to their buddies, they probably using the same type of verbiage. My thing is this. Who is he? Why we don't even need to make him important. Oh, actually, like, I mean, you know, I'm stop you right there. I mean, he's, he's big. He's yeah, he's, yeah, he's real been, big. He's been putting this thing down for a minute. So. I mean, I, I I don't personally listen to him either, man. I'm not a big fan of you know Joe Rogan. I've I've listened to him maybe once or twice, but I'm not a big fan of him. But I would say this, man, is like again. Initially, I had this thought process. I was like, well, maybe if he said it a long time ago, his mind might be different and all this other stuff like that. But that that N-word video just kind of cut, man. <laughs> cut to the core, He's man. Funny. So uh, I, don't, I, I, I don't even know if he... I, again, I, I don't know necessarily if he a racist, because, I mean, I'm assuming that, you know, he's hanging out with, you know, guys like Dave Chappelle and him. I think... I would think Dave is a... Is a guy that's not gonna go for that kind of thing, man. Me personally, but uh, that mm. that that N word video kind of cut to the core. Oh, yeah. I, hope so, I, 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 I hope they I called him. Well, they said that I was, you know, and this is just by way of comedy hype. They was had a video out. They just put out maybe right before we started the show, so I didn't get a chance to look at it. Um, talking about why Dave Chappelle hasn't addressed the situation yet, and. You know, Dave is calculating, man. So I'm pretty sure he's trying to get all the facts before he actually. He's probably gonna do a whole show about it. <laughs> probably. I mean, yeah, to, to be honest with you, you know, he said this is Joe Rogan. He was saying like, you know, the compilation that they put together was years of work, or years of taking a lot of conversations out of context. So it's like if we having this conversation, and someone just snipped a little piece out of every podcast that we said that was some of the worst stuff that we possibly could have said. It just put it together you would sound crazy yeah it would sound horrible it would sound horrible so um just to you know and I, and I and i always say this too you know like who knows man if you took everybody facebook posts and jokes and everything like that and you know put them all out there you probably would feel the same way too. You would probably feel people are racist and all kind of other stuff I like too, that too. If you just went back and looked at every, everybody's little nicks and knacks, you're going to find some crazy garbage. But I honestly listened to his apology and his apology sounded like really whack. I listened to his yeah. apology, man. His apology sounded really funny style, you know, because he even made some statement in the apology about like how black people are allowed to use the word and, all kind of other stuff like that. And, you know, and it's kind of like he's saying, oh, well, I can't use the word, but but you guys use the word or something. You know what I mean? It's kind of it's, weird. It's, it's wrong when I say it is basically what he's saying. It's wrong when he's I say He's corny for that. He's corny for he that. Shouldn't even have brought, he, if he's going to apologize, he should have never even brought that up. Exactly. But I got to tell yeah. you something. And I'm not I, saying that it's good for black people to use it either. I think well, it should be a word that nobody should use it. That's what I was getting ready to get into now. You know, don't get me wrong. Like, if I'm around my peoples or whatever, sometimes I slip up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it like he was saying it, though. I want to make reference to the fact that he kept saying E-R, E-R, E-R. That means he got a Confederate flag in his house. Anyway. I'm... I don't even know that, man. I'm just saying that it's just like, it's just, I'll give you an example, man. Like if we got on here and we started using like Jewish slurs and all the other stuff like that and the different ethnic slurs uh, that we could use, you know what I mean? We would have problems. Yeah. As black people, we would have problems. They'd be kicking you off YouTube. Give, and we couldn't give no, no, 
tiny little apology that doesn't sound sincere at all. We wouldn't be able to get off that easy. You can't even use the, you can't even type the word, the N word in Facebook. You can't even type it in Facebook. Yeah, if you type it in, it kicks you off. Well, my it won't thing kick is, you it, 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 will, it will move the word or something like that, or delete the word or something like that. Who is, I was gonna say that you made reference to black people shouldn't use it either, and I said sometimes I slip up when I'm around my peoples. But I will tell you this, you know, y'all know I like to shoot pool or whatever, and I go to the bar, go shoot pool, or whatever, and it bothers me when I go to a mixed bar, like you know age-wise as well as ethnicity and it bothers me when my people come in there and they like using the word like you know uh, or telling the bartender you my n-word you know what i'm saying and yeah i just it makes my skin crawl because it's an embarrassment you know it's an embarrassment to hear i know you don't really listen to like his show and i'm not gonna say i listen to every episode it's joe rogan podcast be like four hours long in most cases but um funny that you mentioned that's because when he has a person like dave Chappelle on or donnell rollins which you know donnell rollins gets on there and he's doing, do he use the m word yes then? he he you know he's doing his donnell rollins thing so if you pulled up you know i didn't do it for the purpose of this show but if you just and any of the listeners out there pull up those clips of Donnell Rollins or Dave Chappelle on his show. He's using the N-word. They will use it and use it, ex- well, Donnell Rollins especially, excessively. And so it, it asks the question that you just did. This is mixed company. You know what I mean? So if you're in a certain situation where you're sitting across from Joe Rogan and everybody's an N-word this and word that or whatever, I'm using this constantly, he might get to a spot where he's comfortable because you're comfortable. Well, clearly he's comfortable. Yeah, so I mean... Well, just well, to say that, in I, a, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I don't think he, I don't think he, I don't think no person outside the African American people, I mean, we shouldn't feel comfortable either, but no person outside of us definitely should feel comfortable using the, the N word at all. They at do. All. They do. No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that they do. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying that you should not feel comfortable at all. You know what I mean? Because again, I think the N word and I'm not pushing aside any other racial slurs to any other ethnic group, but the N word is different. It's different, man. It's a different word, man. Like, you know, it comes with a whole lot more. It got a lot of history behind it. So I just don't understand. I, I don't understand how anybody could feel comfortable outside of being African American that uses it. You know what I mean? I, I I don't get me wrong. When we was kids, we grew up in the neighborhoods. We was with a lot of Puerto Rican people, different ethnic groups, and stuff like that. And we all, you know, we we let Puerto Ricans use it. You know what I mean? But it's kind of weird because we would never say racial racial slurs to Puerto Ricans. Puerto Ricans in New York. That's part of the language. Yeah. But you could never that say a, anything. That, that, I, I'm going to be funny. completely honest with you, and this might get a few uh, thumbs down or whatever you want to say, but let's be for real. They may use it all day, Hispanic brothers and sisters, but at the end of the day, you're not saying nothing, no type of slur about them around them. You know what I mean? Y'all get what I'm saying. Yeah, but, and then also, too, yeah, and then also, too, I would have to say this. I think we as kids allowed them to use it because they was with us in the street and the police harassed them just like they harassed us. Mm. You know, that kind of, that kind of thing, man. You know what I mean? But as I got older, you know, I, I can understand that, you know, you know, a Puerto Rican male man is going to get away with a lot more than us as African-Americans in these streets. Not right you know now. What I mean, so not right now. No, well, what I'm saying, they still get they can no. Let's catch flack, but they ain't get they they don't have it like us. Not now, now, now. They I'm still sorry. catch flack. Anybody, any don't person of color has it bad. I guess, granted, we do have it really, really bad. But any person of color, and see, that's what bothers me. This is kind of like 
this has to do with the topic, but it's kind of off the topic. This is what bothers me. You know what I'm saying? Because you just said when you were younger, you grew up with, with them. Everybody was around. OK, I was around Spanish people, too, in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day. When you ask them, like, it's very few that claim their their Afro-Latino side or Latino side. You know what I mean? And really, they're people of color, just like we are. But if you I, ask, get, I, I get it, but, uh, Rican, but I, not, I, I, they will tell you they're not black. I'm Puerto Rican. They will tell you that in a heartbeat. No, I, well, I don't know, man. Because you know what's funny? I grew up with a lot, a, a lot of Puerto. I mean, they should be proud. Of, they should be proud of their Puerto Rican heritage. Why not? But everybody you know come I mean? from us. Well, I, I would say this: growing up where we grew up at, I grew up with Puerto Ricans that came up in pretty much a black neighborhood. So I guess maybe they identify with us more than they would identify with you know, other people. But um, mm -hmm. I would say, I would say this, those are my brothers. So we allowed them to get away with it. But again, because we seen them getting, they was with us when we was getting harassed by the police, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All kinds of other stuff. So we allowed them to get away with it. But again, as I got older, I say, you know, that, that's not cool for nobody to really say, man, this is not a word for anybody to just use out of their mouth. And I'm not saying I didn't use it in my lifetime. You know, and who knows, maybe in some instances it might slip out here and there, but um for the most part I try not to use it. You know what I mean? Kim Kim, since mm -hmm. we doing all of this racial stuff, let's hop on to Whoopi. Cause I, I really I have something to say. And I don't think y'all gonna agree with me because nobody ever does. All right, but well to close this particular subject out, um, to speak to the point that you said um the apology sound, sounded almost like a non apology. Right. It's because at that time he released that apology. Spotify lost two billion dollars in stock. That because, don't have nothing to do with him well, being. Well, hear me, hear me out. He lost. They lost over two billion in stock because of the controversy he had with the COVID situation. So mm. then, when the controversy with the COVID situation happened, he put the apology out. Stock went back up, and then maybe a couple of days later, you got this coming out. And so now, you know, in order to, you know, I don't, not, I, I honestly don't believe Spotify care about the N word. I think the problem was is the COVID issue. Yeah, the COVID issue, that, <laughs> and then, um, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just the fact that once that stock dropped, then you know, that's you know, stock is money. But also too, he was saying this is Joe Rogan as of, I want to say yesterday. What's the day? The tenth, ninth. So. Right. Um, yeah, the night. So yesterday, yeah, yesterday, he was saying that the uh, recent the recent controversies he's having is a political hit job, and that's coming from the Hollywood Reporter. He said on Tuesday him. in his uh his his episode of his podcast, he said that um in a lot of ways this is a relief that the video of him saying the N word had always been out there, and this is a political hit job. They're taking all this stuff I've ever said that's wrong and smushing it all together. It's good because it makes me address some stuff that I really wish wasn't out there. The question that I have, too, is, um, and I know you want to get into your thing, Just, but the question I have, too, is that if Spotify paid him over $100 million to, uh, you know, get all the episodes of his show, you mean to tell me you did not vet any of the episodes that he put out that you purchased? So they knew. They, I, I don't, yeah, they, yeah, they had to know. Somebody had to know. Yeah. That you know these things would eventually come out, you know. Right. What I mean? but, well, then also too, what is he being a relief? See, that's what I'm saying. That the the fact that he even says that, man, it, it kind of is taken from the is because again, if Whoopi said the well in the regards, we'll get in the Whoopi thing. But if Whoop, Whoopi said after what she said, you know, now that it came out, it was a relief or something like that, you know she would never be on television again. That means she that you knew this stuff he's, he's saying it's a... Yeah, it's it's, it's a relief, meaning that it, that's a dangerous comment, man. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? It is. No, you know, it's a dangerous comment. That, that, right there should, that right there should cancel him. You know what I mean? And I'm not for canceling nobody. I'm into freedom of speech and all that other stuff like that. But, you know, that right there, should they should tax him or something or hit him hard. Cause he's almost saying like like shoo, now that I got this off my chest we can go on like I, I'm not even worried about whether or not Spotify is going to get rid of me 
I got this off my chest so we can move on. Oh, That's yeah. crazy. That's why the five ten toes down. They said they're not they're not letting him go because of that. But he also said that um for his recent apology video, he said you should apologize if you regret something. I do think you have to be careful not to apologize for nonsense. Real life is people who know who know you and you're a great guy. On a podcast where you're talking for hours on end, I have said stuff about every demographic of human being possible and I regret everyone that was like not funny. The punishment is everybody hears it and I'm also an a-hole is what he said, but I can't stop shooting. I can't stop swinging. Over time, people will understand, will understand you, excuse me, and they know you. And if you misstep, they know what you're trying to do. You're not a vicious person. You're just trying to be funny. So, yeah, I, I think I probably I was I probably could have dealt with him better, man, if I didn't hear that video, that whole video, and then uh, also too the fact that his apology is a uh, kind of kind of trash to me, man. You know what I mean? I would have respected better if he got on there and just said, listen, man, I said some things in the past that were incorrect. I apologize for it, and I got out of there. It seems like he's apologizing, but he's kind of going 10 toes down, you know, on the back end. You know what I mean? It's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. Trump's just said that um, he's an interesting guy, but he has to stop apologizing to fake news and radical left maniacs and lunatics. <laughs> How many yeah, ways can you Trump say you're sorry? So, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to close out yeah. that Joe Rogan yeah, situation. Yeah. But um, so to speak to your point with Whoopi, and that happened, Whoopi should be on the tail end of her suspension, right? Because that was like a week yeah, ago. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I don't think she should have got suspended. Nah. I mean, well, nah, 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 nah. nah. But listen, you know, listen. this is big business. What happens is, is that. Do she, you know, should she get suspended for, you know, voicing your concern or your opinion on something? Yeah. <laughs> but we do know what we're dealing yeah. with. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the the ABC and all of them, they're not playing around. They ain't going to let you, let that slip. But Yeah, we'll be, we'll be knew what she was doing. Yeah. So, so, she, she, so, basically, just for anybody who doesn't know, you know, she made comments in regards to the Holocaust which everybody knows is a big no-no. Especially in New York City. That's a fact. Especially, yeah, especially in New York. But um, my thing is, I really... Do you have a clip or something? Yeah, actually what? I do. Um, All right, so let's let the clip rock, and then I'll make my comment. All right, so to set it up, they were talking about um, these books are being banned from schools. Uh, Mouse, and which Mouse is, is like a graphic novel that depicted their holocaust but they had like the jewish people were mice and the uh, nazis were cats and it's like a big best-selling graphic novel and the other one was to kill a mockingbird so they were moving yeah moving them from schools so all right so this is pretty much the midst of the conversation and here we go If you're going to do this then let's be truthful about it because the holocaust isn't about race no no, it's well, not about maybe race. Maybe a city. Yeah, no, they it's Jews about a different it, race. But it's it's not about race. It's not about well, race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. Now let's stop right there. What was wrong with what she said? Man's inhumanity to man. Yeah, what's wrong with that? I didn't say there's anything. I, think, well, wrong with it. I didn't think it was anything was wrong with it. I didn't say anything was wrong with it. It is a fact, but see, I'm going to tell you why people got mad. People got mad because they know her last name is Goldberg, and they're like, oh, you stunting. Ah, ah. They got mad because of that. They got mad because of her skin color, her last name ain't adding up. It don't match. Well, she has a Jewish years. last name. Yeah, that's she has a Jewish years. last name. But at, at the end of the day, it is man's inhumanity to man. And it is, it is messed up what happened to the Jews. I'm not taking nothing away from that. That was a horrible, horrible situation. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy how our two races are really not, uh, you know, more intertwined, it, it, you know, with the simple fact is, man, we know what you went through. Yeah, we know what you went through. Let's stick together. But it's sad that we're still torn. But um, I don't think what she said was wrong at all. I don't. Now, I don't the, think she should have got suspended. And I just don't, I don't agree with the whole situation. Well, I think what happens is a lot of people are trying to say technically, 
on a, a technically she was correct because according to um I don't know whoever created this the five races are actually white black African American American Indian Alaskan Native Asian and Native Hawaiian or something like that and they were saying that that's what Initially, that's what they were saying, that <clears throat> that's what she was trying to say or something along those lines. But I don't think she was trying to say any of, any of that. But on my side, I, I believe, you know, we we know those five races are on, you know, every job application or whatever the case may be. But um, at the end of the day, um, you know, we I guess we all say, you know, when we say black, we say it's a race. When we say, uh, you know, any other ethnic group, we normally call it a race of people or something like that. You know what I mean? It may not be correct as far as like, you know, a book is concerned, but, you know, we always say it's a race of people. So I, 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 I can mean, see how some some people may get a, offended. But I, I really what I think the bottom line to Whoopi Goldberg is that I think she was like going above and beyond to say how hor- hor- horrible the Holocaust was. And I think she went she she got lost in her words. I think that's really what it was. I don't think she did. I don't think she said anything wrong. I think that people took what she said out of context. And at the end of the day, when I think about race, I think about two races. Either you're a person of color or you're white. That's it. Because this is what I'm saying. It's a lot of people. You know, you could be from Guyana. Okay. If a war breaks out, what side are you going to be on? You can't go over there. So I look at it like either you're a person of color or you're not. And I might be wrong for thinking that way. I mean, what did you say? Alaska and Pacific? If if a war breaks out, where are they going? You better come over here. Uh, I'm a human being, man. I'm with Whoopi on this one. <laughs> I'm, with, I'm, I'm team Whoopi, too. I'm team I'm Whoopi. See, I'm a I human agree, being. We actually agree on something. Yeah. We actually I, don't, agree on something. I, don't, I don't subscribe to no, uh, you know, again, I used to, you know, I, don't get me wrong. I'm a black man at the end of the day. I know where I stand. But um, like I always say, man, I, I love my white brothers. I love, you know, Jewish brothers, Spanish brothers, whoever you are, man. I, if you're a decent person, I dig you. But, um, Again, I maybe I think I think I think Jewish people just like us. If they, if she said black wasn't a race, we would lose it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Black people yeah. would lose it. Yeah, because it, they would take it out. Because it's being taken out of context. She's trying to say exactly what you said. Like we just need to be loving one another. It's a man's inhumanity, right. to man. You know what I'm saying? Like we, man did something to man did something wrong to his fellow man. That's all she's trying to say. That's it. Not to, me- not to mention Whoopi, man, is uh, uh, like, you know, she's like the ambassador or the, what do you call it, the liaison for black people and white people. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, and I'm I'm not, I mean, no disrespect <clears throat> when I say this, but, you know, once upon a time, Monique called her the help. <laughs> Remember when Monique was going through a situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, was trying yeah, to, she yeah. was like, if you call me, I would have schooled you or whatever. And Monique was like, look, well, if you're telling me basically to roll over and not get what I deserve and work for free. She said, that's slavery. And, Where's Monique um, working now? Huh? What's Monique doing now? I don't She's probably still doing I'm probably doing like She's probably just doing stand-up oh, or whatever. doing like stand-up? Okay. Yeah. But she was like, yo, I don't want you to school me on nothing like that. Not to just roll over and, you know what I mean, work for free. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dissing Whoopi, but it's just like it's funny how stuff like that come full circle. You know what I mean? Where they pretty much show I really, you but where, the difference between where that, you at with it. Yeah, but the difference between that is there's Whoopi Goldberg. She doesn't really have to do the view every morning. She has had revenue since she's been generating revenue for herself as a stand-up comedian since what the 80s? She's she's set. She's done movies, she's done stand-up, she's done uh uh this TV show for years now, you know, she's been on the view, she took over after Barbara Waters. Walters, and at, at the end of the day, she's straight. She's got however, her money. However, though, however, I can kind of argue with that. Bill Cosby was straight once upon a time. So when your name gets tarnished, all that goes out the window. You know what I mean? And that's what it is. So when this thing right here happened, it's pretty much going to tell Whoopi, like, yo, you better watch this stuff. 
You know what I mean? I think, I, honest, honestly speaking, with who she is, I don't even think it'll go no further than that. She already probably nah, it won't. It won't. But it's just two like, weeks on it. Now you because of her history, you'll be careful about apologize. what you're saying, though. You you understand? She shouldn't, what I'm have, mm-hmm. she shouldn't have apologized. It's really sad that when you get into these positions, like um, a Whoopi Goldberg or. Uh, uh, just anybody, when you get into entertainment, you get in these positions, you really can't even express yourself. You can't even be who you want to be because any any little thing you say, they're going to dissect it. They're going to try and break you down. They try and get you out of your job. You know what I'm saying? It's, I, I just want more depression. I, I, you know what's funny? I think it could have been an apology, but it also could have been her just explaining the whole situation. Like, and I'm quite sure when she comes back, her explaining the whole situation is going to be basically like, did y'all listen to the comment? That exactly. is the most heart. That's the most heart feeling, com- uh, feeling comment towards the Holocaust that there possibly could be. You know, the yeah, only word is. that she would say that she miss, you know, she, I would say she misspoke by saying that they're, they're not a race. And, and again, technically speaking on a, on a book level, <laughs> it's not, you know, there's five different races, supposedly. And, uh, you know, if we're following that, maybe not. But on the same token, you know, I guess everybody would feel um, slighted if you don't call them a race. If you told a Haitian person that they're not a race or, you know, Caribbean person, a Hispanic person, they're not a race or something like that, they would all feel slighted. So I get that. But I think it would have been not necessarily a crazy you know full-fledged apology it would have been more so simple just to say listen man did y'all listen to this comment she said it's man's inhumanity to man yeah that means right. it's just evil but what's 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 <laughs> how evil. how better can you put that you know what i mean right uh, that's my that's my that's my thing on it you know my take, take on i agree that. you agree on this one yeah me and him we on the same page can you <laughs> <laughs> can you believe yeah, this <laughs> oh. said, man's, man's hit man said, "Man, humanity to man. You can't get no better than that, man." No, I agree I with you. That was beautiful. Put so, this one down in the books. Beautiful. Put it down in the books. So I agree uh, with Brooklyn Drake. On a lighter so, note, yeah. What's up? All right. So you had a chance to catch up on Ozark. I see. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna we're gonna round off this show on the Ozark situation. So. Tell us what you thought about it. Let me just say. Season two, part one. No, season four. Is it four? One. Oh, that's right. Four, four. four. I'm thinking about another show. Season four, what? part one. It's a final just, final joint, final stretch. Let me just say this real quick. Mm-hmm. I, when I watched the final episode of part one, a sadness came over me because one, we don't know when part two is coming out yet. And two, it's going to be over, over. And that is literally one of the best shows. And I'm going to hate to see it go. Four years is not enough for me. Like Marty and Wendy, they could keep doing this for, I I, I will watch it all the time. Like all the time. Mm -hmm. That last episode was bananas. Bananas. But the whole season was crazy. Well, you you want to really, start? It, you don't want to, I guess, spoil it too much because everybody listened it. to it and didn't see it. I, all I know is that they pissed my girl or Roof is mad. It's already over, man. Everybody, if you ain't watched it all, I something wrong. All right. <laughs> no, it's still some, it's still some people so, that haven't watched it. All right. So, spoilers ahead. You spoilers ahead. You can say uh, that. And that you've been okay. warned. So, if you don't want to listen to it, you yeah. can turn this off. Yeah. All right, go how for about it. How, they, how about how yeah. he said, we told you to yeah, stop mo- uh, we told you to stop selling heroin and, and you keep doing it. And pop Darlene in the head and then said, sorry kid. And pop old boy in the head too. First of all, that was a sick relationship anyway. Yeah, yeah that was crazy. He's like, he's like 20 something years younger than her. Yeah. Like that could be her son. 20 something years younger than her. I'd beg to say 40. (laughs) Maybe that's more like she's about 70 years old. How about the episode where the father, where Tommy from Power, his father went into the house? How about, uh, how about, how about, how about, your joint? Yeah, he went out for a second. Yeah, we can't hear you. Amen. 
Yeah, we got you now. For me, mine? Yeah, yours yeah, went out. Yeah, you went out. Oh, I, yeah, you froze on oh, that yeah. shit. Uh, but we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, I was going to say, um, the, the coldest episode, the whole coldest episode on there was when, uh, <clears throat> when the, uh, what is it, Wendy? Watch Darlene have the heart attack. Yeah, and she sat down. <laughs> yeah, sat down. <laughs> she bent it down. She bent it down in a like a like an Indian position and watched her have the heart attack and then called the police. <laughs> Yo, my homeboy wrote on Facebook sick, the other man, day. Shout out to my homeboy Ed. That's he sad. wrote on Facebook the other day, who's more of a savage, Wendy or Marty? This season right here, your girl Wendy was crazy. She's when always been more savage than Marty. Them, Wendy um, was much worse. She's always been worse. She's always been worse than Marty. Yeah. yeah. Yo, she's been what a, she did, when she, yo, when she, when they called her to identify her brother, she, she looked at Marty, she said, I gotta go identify the body. He said, well, we know it's not him. She said, obviously. I said, what is going yeah, on she, with me? When she let oh, down, gosh. remember when the, when the drug king pan told her, yo, like, you let me down of everybody. Yeah, he like, said. Yo, I, let me, that means you must have some high hopes for this chick. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, let, well, well, let's talk about that real quick because I need to watch that last episode again. My confusion is this. They was playing sides. I get it. So does Javi know that his nephew is is all mixed up in this or they don't know? He like, said the nephew was going to try to make a play for him eventually. He was going to try to take over. So but he are, gave him... But he told him he was taking over. But they they flat out told the the um the uncle. They told him like, yo, like you got to do this with with the FBI, uh, right? More years. What happened? <clears throat> right. What happened? So he had to do five more years. They told him they wanted to be. In, they were saying they wanted him in the car in, in charge of the cartel for five more years. So how did so how did nephew so how would they tell the nephew? They told him he, he could run it for another year. Well, he told the nephew initially that he could run it, but then that's when the uh, was it the CIA or FBI stepped in and told him that he had to he had to take it back from the nephew, and uh, he was saying that that was going to be yeah the nephew wasn't going to like that because he's going to probably try he to wasn't gonna like him. it because it already gave it to him. And you see how, the, but you see how they screwed the black chick too because they, oh, yeah, they didn't let her yeah. know they screwed her big time. She did all that work for what? I think she about to get. I think she about to get dirty too. I, she I did get dirty. Can, she can break it down with Marty. Yeah, she's about to get down. Yeah. She might be yeah, she she watch out. <laughs> I want to know where this is going because I want to know I want to know where it's going to go because I want to know what Ruth thinks she's going to do with the cartel. I don't know, but it's going to be good. And Ruth's going to be dead. Be, yeah, do you think it's going to be like Breaking Bad where, you know what I mean, how that ended, man? No, I never watched Breaking Bad. You never watched Breaking Bad? Oh, Nah, oh, everybody told me to watch that and Ray Donovan, and I just haven't watched either. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you gotta watch Breaking yeah. Bad. But yeah, Ozark, gonna, Ruth is gonna Ruth, die. <laughs> let, let's talk about this. I don't know. I don't know if y'all y'all know, but like, um, Power Book Four started, and it's Tommy. Mm. I think that this one might be better than all of them. I'm gonna just put that out there. I'm gonna you put know, that you out. know, honestly, I don't know because I don't have that chance. I know that's crazy. Like, who doesn't watch Power? You too, Andre? We yeah, was, I watch we was it, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm not saying Tommy? I don't watch it. I'm saying I don't have that channel. I don't, I can't watch it because I don't have that channel. You you get it for three ninety nine. They yeah. advertise it on on Instagram all the time. <laughs> three ninety nine. The first week is free. But I can't look, pay the three ninety nine, man. I'm not doing. Andre, it. let me. <laughs> not doing. <laughs> I gotta ask you, you gotta get a fire stick, man. You need. Let's talk after the show. I know some people. Andre, <laughs> did you watch Tommy? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, yeah. I watched what do you? What, what are you thinking? I well, I figured because he's more like a seasoned act, actor and everything like that. I think they would say the best for last. But that's not the last. That's I think it was the, the best for last. It was a good. Episode, his first episode was. No, I'm just saying, as far as like you know, they had like a like a tri- that trilogy thing going on with the uh, with the it's uh, still going. And then they had the one power with, uh, what was the other? Tariq, right. raising Canaan. Right. Well, they're going they're going to keep rounding up, but when I say out of the trilogy, like they when they came up with them three shows, I would think they would say Tommy would be the the, the best for last. 
I, I know I'm loving the vibe. I'm loving it already. Um, uh, I'm not knocking. I got tired of seeing the mom as the head drug dealer bossing everybody around this, this, and that. I got tired of seeing that. I like, like the fact that it's a little switch up. It's a little change. I, I like where it's going. And honestly speaking, you know, I, I was I, this this season of Power got really good after a while. I, I, I was mm. I was more impressed because at first it starts off so crazy. I'm just like, what is all of this? Like, what are we doing here? But you know, with all of with all of Fifty Cent's um movies and shows, I won't say movies, but the little shows, all of the movies starts off horrible. Or, I don't well, know, not movies, BMF, the shows, shows start off. Yeah. BMF didn't start off horrible the to pol- me. The shows started off hard. I think I, I think that started off dry too, man. Because uh-huh. what happens is he takes so long to set the characters up. Now I, I, like, love, I like the beginning of BMF. I I, 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 I just actually I think the last couple of episodes got better. I love BMF. I think the last couple of episodes got better, but I love the. I'm not saying it wasn't. It didn't turn out to be good. No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't like the. I thought it was dry in the beginning. Oh uh, no! I thought it was perfect. I thought it was a perfect it was dry setup. In the beginning. Yeah. I don't know, but even but, even the even the original power. If anybody watched the original power, the first couple of shows first was trash. Two seasons. First two seasons. No, I'm saying no, I'm saying the first couple of shows was not, not was not that good. It wasn't until I it got so. yeah. He he takes the a first, long time to set up the show. The first show of he power even admitted he, he 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 even somewhat admitted to it. He was saying like you know they take a take they, they take a little while to get the characters together. The first episode of Power was dope. That's where he had the, the guy and the girl in the basement, you know, of the club. He switched out his clothes. That's when we see he was still in the life. You know what I'm saying? And I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It kept me interested. It kept me yeah. interested. Yeah. Right. yeah. Now, right another now. stroke. Wrap this Go ahead. Up. Go ahead. Go ahead. It is, ready to wrap it is, it's Succession on HBO. You got to check it out. You keep talking about Succession. Talking about succession. Like succession. You got to check it out. And of course, billion, Billions is so. Alright. Yeah. All right, Joe. We're gonna get ready to wrap. It was a light show today, so huh. uh, covered a lot of ground. And um so we're gonna get ready to close it out. Anybody got any closing remarks? No, I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Nah. nah. We good, we good. All right, nah, it was a good. light show today, folks. So if you're listening, it's a real light show. Had a good one last week, you know, so um let's go we take it easy today. So the only one my podcast is available on all major platforms that you stream your podcast on. Please don't forget to rate the show and subscribe. Smash up the likes. Also, if you'd like to get in contact with the only one my podcast, you can reach us via Instagram and Twitter at the only one Mike P one Facebook and LinkedIn at the only one Mike podcast. And also via email at the only one Mike zero zero at gmail.com. And we also on YouTube only one Mike podcast. Just type in only one Mike podcast. Thank you for making time. And as always say, speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others, even the dull and the ignorant, because they too have their story to tell. I never ran from the Ku Klux Klan and I shouldn't have to run from a black man. Peace. Peace. Peace.